Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here, and we're fighting the Spanish Civil War as part of our look at the World Ablaze mod for Hearts of Iron 4. So we're going to continue this here. We're going to support that attack. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And though I know various means you may be coming fine, check that you are subscribed if you, because they do unsubscribe people. So we need to maybe, you, yes, let's keep our dominance there. Keep just enough for that. Oxide shortage, oh, that's causing us problems maybe. Okay, um... I don't want to do that, so let's let's go with uh, um, there we go. Okay, so I have to watch that. Okay, expanding civilian factories heavily. That's good. Fresh auto bomb. Yeah, let's do the USSR tractor experiments for 21 days. Oh, well, um, didn't have much of an answer there. Basically, it's a mineral that is used to make aluminum. Um, often found, I think, in sand and that type of thing. So yeah, I don't know very much about bauxite, as you can tell. Um, just that's sort of what you find in nature that then, that is then processed, in the primary component in the processing in, to make aluminum. Okay, um, yeah, we're not going to do that. So sorry, I don't have a better answer on that. Yeah, um, or at least part of the element there. And I think it's something as similar. It's, it's heated up and crisp, it's crystallizing, um, I don't know, maybe it's even bauxite, I don't know, um, is heated up and crystallizing whatever um, into glass. Let's do this. I know it's going to cost us five civilian factories for 90 days, but let's let's do that. Let's get a bunch of fuel. Don't know if we really have the proper storage for it or not, but let's give it a shot.
Okay. We have bonuses for researching some armor technology, which is good. Well, so far the Hindenburg didn't crash this time and Amelia Earhart made it all the way around the world. Japan declares war on China. Nice. Just what needs to happen here. Okay, so we've reduced some of our economic fatigue in a Monday. So that's only going to be at war. Yeah, let's reclaim the Axis powers. Was there a take research treaty between the Soviets and the Germans historically? Um, yes, in a way. Um, up until... There's one area that I'm not... I think most of it was stopped by 36, actually, I think. But in the 1920s, particularly, and the early 1930s, there was a whole sort of research area out in Russia, in the Soviet Union, that was used for um, both aircraft and tank research. So it was done very, very quietly. Um, I think some elements were continued for a while under National Socialist Germany, but eventually with the anti turn pact, all of that stopped, but there was some of that going on. And, but I think really most of it is sort of pre this, this 1937 time. Um, I could be wrong on that again. I'm really mutual assistance, sell through a lot of production of that. Aid to Spain, that looks nice. Okay, they'll get couple of military factories. We'll go for that. And over here, production efficiency growth. Okay. Oh, we've got a lot more points. Huh. What's our car? Well, only 41, so... So I think I think I'm gonna go with Henschel. People often look at um, the sort of and I, I say people including myself in the past, the sort of antag the antagonism that the Nazis and Hitler in particular showed towards the Soviet Union publicly as being the sort of real story. And it's much deeper than that. Germany, of course, is a pariah, um, a sort of an untouchable nation after World War I, and so is the Soviet Union. So there is a certain amount of mutual cooperation going on there. Now, of course, the German government 
it moves around, you know, different elections move it a little to the left, a little to the right. But there's still a large faction of mostly traditionalists. The Hindenburg keeps getting elected president, even though sometimes he's dealing with a sort of socialist majority government, I believe. And I'm not up on all of them. And I don't even know if majority is the right term, but uh, socialist plural, plurality, meaning they're the, the largest party or center left coalition groups. So this really isn't done on ideological grounds on either side, but it's sort of um, pragmatism on both sides. There's a lot of cooperation. Now, just some interesting sort of facts. Germany around this time, you know, give or take uh, a year or two, you know, could be as early as 36, could be 39. Germany sells some big steel mills, big um, uh, rolling mills to like um, roll big, big chunks of steel like you see um, in some of the films, you know, things that are huge, just huge. And Germany sells them to the Soviet Union to be able to make rolled steel armor. Now, I think Germany's thinking that the Soviet Union is going to use these steel mills to build um, a big fleet of ships, because that's one of the things you do with the big steel um, rolling mills is build, build big slabs of armor. Well, it allows them to build the T-34 and the KV-1, because the Soviet Union did not, to the best of my knowledge, did not have the capability to roll steel as big and thick to build the armors for the KV-1 and the T-34. So they wouldn't have had the T-34 unless Germany sells them the steel mills to do them. They would have been stuck with thinner armor that you find on you know, the, the T-26, the BT series, the um, T-35 tanks, you know, biggish tanks or big land battleship tanks, but with thin armor plate. So Germany selling that industrially to them. Germany license, what was it, the BMW motorcycle and sidecar to the Soviets, and they build tens of thousands of the things, um, you know, around this time period, maybe a little later, maybe a little more towards 1939. Um, they license the production of the Pac-36 anti-tank gun to the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union almost directly copies it. They actually pay the licenses, unlike some of these other things like Walter Christie, but they don't pay off. They pay the license fees for them because they want to keep good relations with Germany. They up the caliber from 37 millimeters to 45 millimeters, but otherwise it's basically the same anti-tank gun. So there's a lot of this economic cooperation once the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact is signed and Poland is sort of gone. They set up um, air flights, I think it's daily or something, or weekly, or I don't know what it is exactly, but between Berlin and Moscow, you know, from here to here into the Soviet Union for, I guess, enough passengers that want to go back and forth between them, and I'm sure it's not Soviets wanting to vacation in Germany or Germans, you know, going for the, the lovely lack of skiing, flatness on the snow or something in Moscow. There's enough economic, commercial, um, diplomatic activity going back and forth that they set up air flights, you know, officially scheduled air flights. Now, this is all leading up. This is, you know, in 19, late 1930. Nine early 1940 that they're setting up the air flights. So they're getting all this stuff set up and going here. That's fair level of cooperation. So there's a lot of people that don't quite know the level of cooperation between the nations. It's not just all the hostility that admittedly the, the, the Nazis, okay, it looks like somehow, I don't know how they're getting, I know there there are factories here and get some level of local supply bonus, but I think they should run out of... Okay, now that you've got organization, you rejoin the attack.
Okay, let's look at our um, Nope, we don't have enough light tanks to do that. Just add a, well, maybe a light motorized. We have enough motorization. We almost have enough motorization, so I'm going to do this. Get the division a little stronger there. Let's all invade Germany. Um, I think at some point Stalin gets worried that Germany's going to become too strong. And I think they do invade at some point. But then again, if... See, it's all conditional. Hitler, di Hitler does not, for most, multiple reasons, does and not just because he... Um, thinks uh, Britain is another Aryan nation. That's part of it. But he's very willing to fight Britain and fight hard against Britain. I think part of it is he's a, he he's read enough history. He's scared of the British Navy. He's scared of invading Britain. Uh oh, we get pushed back out. What? 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 No! 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 no, no. Come back in. You just got there too early. Um, so he really doesn't want to invade England. So, um, he doesn't, but had, had Britain signed some sort of peace treaty with Germany, you know, not necessarily meaning that England surrenders, but, you know, go, oh, okay, yeah, you've won in France, you've won in Egypt or something like that. And we're going to do a peace treaty. I don't know that the Soviet Union is going to invade because Germany's looking very strong. Let me support that attack. Economic aid to Spain. Very nice. Okay, so we got economic aid to Spain. Let's go with the... Yeah, let's just. Uh, this is the World Ablaze mod. Hello, Smiley. How you doing? We're playing as Germany, currently fighting the Spanish Civil War. Rather good mod. I have some problems with it. You can watch when I post episodes on YouTube. If you haven't, everybody followed me over on YouTube as well. There's a link below the, the chat there if you want to. Scroll down and look, link there. Um, I'll be posting the episodes there where I talked about both the good and the bad. Yeah, it's something that a lot of people haven't heard of, and I'm thinking might be better than Black Ice, or at least a competitor to Black Ice. For those that like fairly historically based mods. A little less complicated in some ways. In some ways it's still quite complicated, most accurately, but... Um, well, normally I go with a mm, training time less now. Ten mm, percent attack. Yeah, we'll still do training time less. And let's see if we can put another. No, okay. Um, we need a larger army to put more. Add another unit in there. Okay. Into production. 
honestly, we need to support a bit. Yeah, they try to be. Yeah, I, again, I have concerns about it, but they try to be um, very historical. Okay, we're going to move here to coordinate attacks. And you can just find it on the Steam Workshop World Ablaze. Oh yeah, no, this this is definite, definitely way more historical than um, uh, the generic game. I don't know if it's more historical than Black Ice, but in some ways it is. Other ways I'm not sure that it is. Oh, I wanted to... Yeah, I created these guys. Let's... Um, well, let's go down here and... Diplomacy, Spain... Um, uh, send air volunteers. Claim will allow everyone from their country. Okay, good. We need to get these guys down here for a little while. Both down to here. Okay. Get some air experience as well. Okay, so we've increased our civilian factories considerably to help pay for some of our imports and expand other military factories. Okay, well, yes, you're right in defining that there's the SA, the SS, and the police. The SS start out as a sort of subgroup, a special sort of protection squad, not uh, for Hitler, and, primarily for Hitler, but it wasn't just a simple follow him around protection squad. It was sort of set up in all the different cities as Hitler moved around. They would sort of form, um, you know, he had bodyguards with him maybe, but uh, set up a, a sort of an elite protection group. The SA is a mass organization of Nazi militia, shall we say. Um, I think that's a good term for them. The SS becomes... I don't want to say elite because they're not necessarily as elite as some people make out but um, a smaller organization that gets in everywhere it's 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 you know it's complicated and it's almost too simple to say but it's true because you have whether camp guards which obviously the SS did the SA briefly did in 1933, when they, the Nazis first come to power, but they do so, such a bad job at it that it, it puts a meaning. They run it badly. Not that, not that they have camps that it's bad, but they run them so badly um, they quickly um, get taken over by the SS. Um, so the SS is everywhere. And the German police... Um, Continue, exist obviously before the Nazis come into power, continues to exist. Once the Nazis come into power, they purge it of unreliable elements, including Jews and whatnot, but um, continues to be there. Eventually, by 1937, um, all of the police are under Himmler and the SS. So that it sets up eventually that there are police generals because they get a hierarchical, hierarchical form of organization. And all of the police generals are full SS members. So sometimes you see some of these SS guys in police uniforms with an SS badge on their police uniforms, or they're in their SS uniforms, just depending on what that day's job. They're going to a big SS meeting, you know, for SS generals, they're all wearing their SS uniform. If they're going to their 
day, normal day job of being a police commander, they're wearing the police uniform. So, um, and the police go continue to get expanded under the Nazis. Um, so they're all three organizations, and I will be talking about them in much more detail in my heart, just because it lends to it, um, Hearts of Iron 3 playthroughs, because we'll have events covering some of that. It's, it's a big issue. Okay, you attack there, you, no, you attack there. Keep those guys pinned and pushed and harassed. Okay, um, well now we wanted to and probably should have done before, but we're going to convert over to that. It's a fairly big jump. We're going to convert to that, and we're going to convert to Panzer II production. Yes, we know that there are now Panzer IIs, and we know that there are better fighters available. Okay. Well, let's mm, well, support equipment. Okay, support equipment, support equipment, support equipment. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, support equipment. No. Attack with the tanks, there we go. Crush the last little pocket up here. Kill the Soviet tank division. There we go. Well, last time it seemed to work pretty good if we came over here, so let's just get on trains and come over here. It's better, I would say, for me to talk either more about the, the a particular element of the... Because the SS gets very big. They buy the organization... Not just, not Himmler personally, but him, the organization buys a very old um, porcelain factory in Germany, Alaric Porcelain, that makes a lot of like porcelain figurines um, and plates and things like that. But they also, and they continue to do those things, often sort of in like 18th century tradi tradition. They buy it, they buy the factory, and they also produce SS knickknacks too. Um, so they, so they're owning a porcelain factory. Um, you know, so they're doing things like that. They're setting, they're they're setting up all, they're, they're getting their fingers in all kinds of areas in Germany. The SA stays. Sort of a mass organization for men. It is a sort of militia like organization. It is a street party activist organization. Sometimes in the role of street tough after the, they come to power, before they come to power, they're constantly doing street battles, but but they're just doing things like campaigning for, you know, people in elections and whatnot. Um, but they're also militia. During the war, they, they, whenever, let's say there's a bombing raid and some airplanes, you know, allied airplanes get shot down, they call out the SA to search the area for downed pilot, enemy pilots, or maybe friendly pilots too that, you know, need, need help um, if any German friendly pilots get shot down. So they're called out for all kinds of duties like that. During this time period, they're doing massive training of men, not just in the SA, but men and military skills for the army. So there, there, there's all kinds of stuff going on with these organizations, and they're different, like, as you, you know, between them, the some of the stuff that the SA is doing, the SS is not, and vice versa. Like, I don't know that the SA is buying any factories that produce anything.
Okay, standardized infrastructure, very nice, that helps. Okay, well, um, fuel, oil. Fuel, yeah, we'll do this, we're gonna need that. Okay, come on, get over, oh, you're actually pushing already, good. Okay, well, why don't you drive to here? So we attack out of two provinces, and uh, we're going to push here between the rivers. I'm going to sort of try to cut off Madrid from the rest of Spain. At least that's the goal. Oh yeah, oh, there's all kinds of differences. We have, like an obvious thing, you know, their own national focus tree. Um... You can see this, they've done this for industrial, they've moved a lot of the auxiliaries. Uh, things like the tanks are specific models, so you don't tweak them uh, like you do in hearts of, you know, um, regular hearts of iron, similar with artillery and aircraft. So you, you get the specific model here, whatever it may be, uh, with a specific set of stats, and there's nothing that changes alters that so there's you know a lot of stuff like that and there's there's a lot of differences and and simple similarly with the navy which i'm mostly ignoring um they've also gone in and changed the doctrines around the way they work heavily so there, there's a lot of changes to this from the base game many of the changes i think are good some are okay, some I don't like. Just because I don't like some of them doesn't mean I don't think it's a good mod. It's just personal preference. Well, some of this I think is the changes to Spain that... Um, uh, Parts of you know the paradoxes made definitely because I tried I tried a um, playthrough and tried to do invade France and I stalled out both times and I was warned that my divisions weren't strong enough by the devs so that could be me um, there's definitely some element of that but I don't know how much is just that we're we're sort of battling here. I sort of... I have this feeling with Hearts of Iron 4 more than Hearts of Iron 3, which I still like Hearts of Iron 3 better, but I like this as well. Um, the battles, and even just in the standard game, take so long that it's too easy to bring reinforcements into them. Even when I... Now this just has a minor advantage, but even when I set up and have an overwhelming advantage, um, so, okay, now we can come down. So you have to complete all of this sort of, this row here to get down to the next level. So do we want to do this or this? Okay, um, let's see, zeroing artillery, or creeping breakthrough, soft attack organization, soft attack organization. So more soft attack, same amount of organization plus. No breakthrough. They both come down to that. Let's do more soft attack. Come over here. We, this is one of pick the one of three. I'm going to look for the Scherplunk, I believe. Yes, Kampf Group. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to do the historical German one. Not that it's necessarily better, but just history. Oh, it's not letting me do that. We, oh, we have to do this one up here first. Okay. Okay, we still have to get this one done. Pretty soon, let's see. Anslush. 
Okay, we need to get 600,000 man, manpower. Okay. Um, we obviously don't have that yet. Let's deploy all these troops. Let's look back here. Okay, now we have that, I guess. So, yeah, okay. Three divisions and five divisions down near the Austrian border. Alright. Ausrücken. Well. Isn't working out really well, isn't it? Okay, um, well, that's why because we haven't put them in an army yet. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, no, it, it's way three is complicated, that's for sure. Let's come up here and keep our Okay, we can do us on slush now which will help with our economic fatigue after probably this next time. So if any of you haven't already followed me on Twitch or subscribed on YouTube, you can do so now. And I'm live streaming on either one, so if you like watching on one service or the other, I'm happy to have you there. Okay, um, I don't know why it keeps showing me that or that. Okay, we just spewed out a bunch more infantry units. We're going to catch up on heavy infantry equipment, support equipment, and tanks, because we're still fighting there. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess more of that. Throw in another tank. Factory, and... We'll do that. Okay, Continental Army. Now let's do Onslush, which as you can see down on the effects, will massive reduction of economic fatigue. So that will help us. with our economic fatigue. Oh, what I want to do here is come over here to edit infantry divisions. So I want to start out with moving some of these The infantry, we don't have them. Okay, so we're not going to be doing that. Never mind. Okay, so what we have to do instead is let's increase our heavy infantry weapons. Well, when we get Austria, that will also increase our factories as well.
to improve machine tools. Great, okay. Well, it's taken most of 37 to get through some of this, but what I want to do here is let's get researching on the Panzer III so that we can start building some medium armor. Yeah, um, I think they've done a pretty good job with the link of um, the focuses. Um, some of them are just a few days, uh, like seven days or 14 days, depending on which ones. But I, I, think, I think it's relatively well balanced. Yes, no, that, that, that is a... Um, for all their claims, and it generally may be um, true that they are trying to do uh, historically, this should not have to be researched. The, the checks were well into production of the 35T, had been doing so for years, selling it to other nations, making a bunch for themselves. The 38T is conceived or planned in 38, but in 39, it's sort of the prototypes were available when Germany rolls in and they were just starting production, commercial or, you know, our series production when Germany comes in in 39. So maybe 39 T would be a slightly more accurate term for it, but Germany should find that. Uh, now it's only, well, with the bonus, it's only 22 days to research. Um, right now, I don't, because we'll use the bonus maybe up on something else. So it's not that big a deal, but it's something that should should happen, and you should inherit a bunch of uh, at least 35 Ts. If you're not going to have the 35 T in the game, it should be a bunch of 38 Ts, because they're very similar vehicles when you take over Czechoslovakia. So yeah, that's a little little wrong for there. E either either it should be given to you a free research, which I think is best when you get Czechoslovakia, or it should open up a quick research once you get Czechoslovakia. Now, and they should also start out with a production line ready to go, you know, with however many factories already producing it and efficiently so that you don't want to go do i want to stop this production or keep going because you know they're producing it that was sort of germany's dilemma and they just kept yeah this is better than scrapping all this and starting over and building panzer fours or Pan panthers or whatever just keep building this and keep improving it you get the hetzer and self-propelled artillery and that kind of thing out of the vehicles and not after the tanks have become way obsolete as tanks, but useful for other things. Okay, well, we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for for watching. Thank you, thanks for liking the videos if you haven't already. Uh, please post your comments, questions, tips below. Love hearing from you. See you next time for more Hearts of